Hey WinTech Warriors, today we will cover how to install and configure Microsoft SQL Server so it can be utilized within WinTech HMI applications. Head to the Microsoft download page for SQL Server and download the Express option. This will start the download of SQL Server 2022 Express. For Windows 10, the recommended version is Microsoft SQL Express 2017 and the recommended version for Windows 7 is Microsoft SQL Express 2014. I'm currently using Windows 11, so I'll download the latest version of SQL Server Express. Navigate to the downloaded file and start the installation. Choose the custom installation type and the download target location, then click install. Select the new SQL Server standalone installation or add features to an existing installation option. It's also worth noting that you may need to add a firewall exception to allow the HMI to communicate with the database. Select Next when ready. Thoroughly read the license terms and accept them. On the next window, you have the option to add an extension for Microsoft Azure. Use default settings in the Feature Selection window. In the Instance Configuration window, new instances can be installed. Running multiple SQL servers on the same computer requires multiple instances. In the Server Configuration window, select Automatic for both SQL Server Database Engine and SQL Server Browser. Select Mixed Mode in the Database Engine Configuration window and enter a password for the SQL Server System Administrator account. When installation is complete, restart your computer and return to the SQL Server Installation Center. In the Installation section, select Install SQL Server Management Tools. You will be directed to a web page where you can download SQL Server Management Studio. Click the link to start the download. Choose a download location and select Install. When installation is complete, you will be asked to restart your computer again. Next. Open the SQL Server Configuration Manager. Under SQL Server Network Configuration and Protocols for SQL Express, enable TCP IP. The SQL Server TCP port number can be found in the IP Addresses tab. If the TCP Dynamic Ports number is zero, change the port number to 1433 and click Apply. Under SQL Server Services, Right-click on SQL Server, and then click Restart. After installing Microsoft SQL Server, launch Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio and log in. Please note that Trust Server Certificate must be enabled or you will not be able to connect to the server. Right-click on the server and select Properties. Under Security, select SQL Server and Windows Authentication Mode in the Server Authentication section. Click OK when finished. In the Object Explorer, select Security, then Logins, then SA. Enter the password and then click OK. When configuring the database server in Easy Builder Pro, the username will be SA, and the password will be the password entered here. To add a new user, open Security, right-click on Logins, and then select New Login. Enter the new login name, select SQL Server Authentication, and enter a password. Select Sysadmin in Server Roles, and click OK when finished. After connecting to the database server, 
A database must be created for synchronizing HMI historical data to the database with the same name. Right-click on Database, and then select New Database. Enter a database name and click OK. This is the database name that will be referenced when configuring the database server in Easy Builder Pro. Let's configure the database server within Easy Builder Pro. In the Data Slash History tab, select Database Server. Select New to configure a new database server. In the General tab, enter the database server parameters configured earlier when we set up the SQL Server. The default port number for Microsoft SQL is 1433. Text entered in the comment field will essentially name the server within your Easy Builder Pro project and can make it easier to choose this server from a list within other objects that sync like the data sampling or event alarm log object. Please note that the PC's loopback address, 127.0.0.1, may be used in the database server section of the project during simulation, while the PC's IP address must be specified before project download. In the Status slash Control tab, choose an address for the status register and enable the control address. The status addresses display the connection status with the SQL Server on the HMI, and the control addresses can change connection parameters dynamically on the HMI. Select OK when finished. To sync sample data within your project to your SQL Server, within your Data Sampling object, enable the History file and the Sync to Database options. Choose your SQL Server's IP address from the database drop-down list and click OK when finished. To sync event log data within your project to your SQL Server, within the History slash Control tab of the Event Alarm log, enable the History and the Sync to Database options and choose your SQL Server's IP address from the database drop-down list. Please note that data will be synchronized to the SQL Server only when the number of data sampling or event alarm log records reach 10,000. To start synchronization manually, please select the Enable checkbox in the Control section in the settings of the Data Sampling or Event Alarm Log object. Then, give a command by entering the corresponding value in the designated address. Alternatively, you can enable the Autosync Periodically option and enter the desired number of minutes. The HMI will build and update a table automatically when used within a data sampling or event alarm object. I mentioned the database server status and control addresses earlier. Let's run a quick demo to see them in action. I've added a numeric object configured with the command address. Entering a value of 1 will start the database server object's functionality. As you can see, the status address has a value of 2, which means we are currently connected to the SQL Server, and the error address has a value of 0, which means we are error-free at the moment. Also featured is the data sampling object's control address. Entering a value of 2 will sync sample data to the SQL database. As I mentioned earlier, you may need to add a firewall exception to allow the HMI to communicate with the database. For this example, I'll add the recommended firewall exceptions within Microsoft Defender. I'm going to open TCP port 1433 and UDP port 1434 for SQL Server default instance and SQL Server browser service. Head to the Firewall and Network Protection section and select Advanced Settings. Click Inbound Rules, then New Rule. Select Port for the rule type, then click Next. Select the appropriate TCP or UDP option for the port. Select 
specific local ports, and enter the port number to allow, then click Next. Ensure Allow the connection is selected, then click Next again. Select when to apply the rule, either domain, private, or public, then click Next. Enter a name and optional description, and click Finish. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, head on over to our channel for more great technical tutorials. And come on down to our forum, it's a great resource for everything WinTech.